right. So what we're going to be looking at today is the Weber's University template. And this is the first of several templates that we'll be taking a look at. This is the most basic. Um, you might have received this template from Lexi or myself, but this should provide you with a nice easy framework to create tutorials that are easy for you to create, but also easy for us to upload into Weber's University. So first of all, uh, we'll take a look at the document. This is a document that uh, that I'll be working from. You'll notice it's called WU Template, but it could be called just about anything. The most important part, though, is this last part is a DOTX, which tells me that this is a template for Microsoft Word and not just a document. Right above this, you'll see that here's a Word document. It's a DOCX, which means that's a Word document. DOTX is a template. So when I double click this, what you'll see is that the document is named something different. It's not named W template anymore. It basically uses that other file to create a brand new document, and this one's called document 17. Yours might say document 1. All right. Within Microsoft Word, if you're not familiar with Word, there's a series of tabs that are up here at the top. Okay, so we're going to be starting with this home tab. Um, once you're in the document, you'll see that there's some different elements. For example, we have a picture for our completed project. So we want to put a nice picture that, you know, people can refer to and know what they're making. Um, you'll also notice that here is a place for your tutorial name. So we're going to fill that out in just a second. Um, there's blocks of text. You'll see we have some standard styles of headers in here. So the headings, I guess, are, are very consistent. And then we're using something called tables. So you'll see that we have these boxes, and each one of these is what's called a cell. And a cell can contain text or it can contain a photo. Uh, so that's what we're using to get you started. You'll also notice that down here in the bottom is a footer. So on each page, what will appear is the name of your project and a copyright with your name. And once you've created these tutorials, feel free to distribute them to students this is just to help you organize your thoughts and get things into position so we can put them up on Weber's University. So let's start out by changing the name of the tutorial. So you'll click and drag where you can actually click, double click on these, use your backspace, whatever you want. But I'm going to create a geometric wire barrette is my, my tutorial. And I'll go ahead and put tutorial at the end of it. Um, I can also change my name down here, clicking and dragging. I can type Kat Kramer. Okay, so that's going to be basically the title of it. If I wanted to change this picture, I could right-click on it and choose Change Picture. And then I can navigate out on my computer to where I actually have the photos. And so in this one, there's uh, quite a few steps to get there. But if I wanted to go look uh, down here, let's say I think Photo 29 had a nice photo. And I could change that photo very easily. Okay. Uh, the next thing that you'll notice is that there's a place for you to put a, a description of your project, several uh, paragraphs up here at the top. And what we suggest on these is that you can write information about your project. Who is it? Uh, you know, who's the recipient? Who would be the person to use it? What kind of materials? Just anything that you'd like about the project. If it's information about you as an artist, that's better suited for your, your instructor bio, which will be on the site. So use these paragraphs to write something about your project. If you'd like to just start typing, what you can do is triple click, which is three little clicks, one, two, three, and then just start typing. You don't have to hit the backspace key or anything. So say, well, this is an intro to my um, Barrett tutorial. Tutorial, I hope you <laughs> like it. All right, so write some information about your project. Okay, so if you scroll down, and I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll, but you'll see that the next section, we actually have a materials list. Basically, we're putting anything in the materials list that is a, that is a consumable. So if you're going to use some sterling silver wire, you might type sterling silver wire, comma, and then... The, uh, the gauge, so for example here, 14 gauge wire. If I need some solder, I might put it here too, easy solder. And then uh, maybe some beads, I'll add some beads here. So I might put uh, um, faceted beads. 
and then a comma about what kind, so maybe Swarovski. Okay, um, four millimeter bicones. All right, so anything that's going to be part of the project is going to end up in the materials list. You'll notice in the next section, this is our tool list, okay? And we always put in here, don't forget safety glasses, but if you're a beater or something, if you want to take that out, you can. Uh, but this actually is a, a table with two different cells. So we want to divide our materials list up into two lists to go into these two cells to make it use space more efficiently. Um, in this case, I'm actually doing a project where I need a jeweler's saw. A soldering setup, a pickle pot, um, and then maybe some some tools. So I need some wubbers, a uh, large. I'm going to capitalize these large, uh, round mandrel pliers. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here and actually put some items over on this side. And let's say maybe I need a bracelet mandrel. Okay, I need a rawhide hammer. And I'm actually not going to capitalize these. I made a mistake up here on this one, so I'm going to make those lowercase except for the very first um, letter. Uh, maybe we need some liver of sulfur. And I can't think of anything else, but that'll be fine for now. All right, so put your, put your materials up in here, add some tools down to this little table here, and then we're ready to move on. The strategy that I use for creating a tutorial um, is to drag the photos in first. So first of all, what I do is I order my photos. I'm going to put it in a list here. I'll take just a second. But I put them in a list and I number them sequentially. Okay, and depending on what type of computer you're using, you could actually create a list and then be able to view them. So I can say, ah, this is photo number one. This is photo I'm sorry, photo zero, photo number one, photo number two, and so on. I'm putting the numbers here as photo zero two, photo zero three, because in some cases it won't order them correctly unless you have a zero in front of those first uh, numbers. So I start out at zero, zero. Zero, zero is always my, my first photo, uh, the finished project. And then I start out with what would be step one, step two, step three. And if you don't have a photo for a step, you'll just skip the number. You just want these to be sequential as far as whatever steps they are. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna move this over so I can see both my Word document and the photos. And it'll take me just a second here, but uh, I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to grab photo number one, and I'm gonna move it here where this photo placeholder is. So I can grab it and then move it on top of the placeholder and you'll see that it updates the photo. The next one is step two, so I can just drag it into place. You can go do that for step three and so on. Okay, I might have to scroll back up. It looks like it's it scrolls my document. Okay, the next one is photo five. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back to this one. So that next one was gonna be photo six. Scroll again, and then let's say photo seven. Okay, alternatively, if I wanted to just work on this from within Microsoft Word, I can right click and change picture, but then I have to go out and go find these documents. So on a Mac, I can, I can go back to a previous folder and that next one would be photo eight. So I double click on it, All right? So there's two different ways you can do this one, is grabbing the photo and dragging it into the placeholder, or you can right click and change picture. Once the photos are in place, you can start typing. So for example, here, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag since I have two paragraphs, but if I want, I can use bold. I could type step one colon space space, turn off bold, and then say use the Weber's uh, large round mandrel pliers to create a series of large loops. Okay, and then I can go to the next one. On this one, since there's not really a couple paragraphs, you can just triple click. So one, two, three, and then just start typing. Um, 
You could also type B and say step two, colon, space, space. Command B will turn off the bold. So you can turn that off and then use the um, heavy duty wire cutting pliers to cut the loops. Okay, and again, down here, I'm gonna triple click. I'm gonna bold it, step three colon, space, space, and then command B turns off the bold. And then I can say, um, make a variety of different shapes and sizes. All right, so that's pretty much how you create the steps. When you're done, if you wanna to go to the end, let's say for example, if I need to delete, uh, delete a row here, what I can do is I can click and drag and then hit the delete key and it'll ask me if I want to shift cells left or whatever, that's fine. Just click OK and it'll delete a row. If I needed to add another row, I can click anywhere in this particular table, choose table layout from the tabs, and then I can use above or below to insert another row. And then what I can do is I can copy. So if I right click, I can copy and then click in the space below and paste. So there's another photo. I can just start writing some text here and that's how I could add a row. There's one last thing that we need to do and that's to go in and change the footer. So go to the footer, you're gonna double click. And in this case, triple clicking doesn't work. It selects the whole line. So we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do, let me reopen this. I'm going to highlight this, and it's a quirk with Microsoft Word, but I can't see this, but I'm just going to type carefully, Geometric Barrette Tutorial, and then I'm going to highlight artist name and type Cat Kramer, and then close this. Okay, it looks like I spelled it right, so that's good, but that will appear on the bottom of every single tutorial. And at this point, what you can do is you can save. You can save the file, so go up to file and save and I can give it a name I can call it you know a testing template in this case and save it as a Microsoft Word document um, the one last step that we will do before we actually publish this as a PDF is we highlight these tables and if you're in the home tab oops there's a button over here that's for borders and you can actually choose none for your borders you can also do this for the rest of these. If you hover in a certain place, you'll see that your cursor turns to an arrow. You can click and drag from left to right, and that selects all of them, and you can turn off that border as well. And so when it's done, it doesn't have any of those borders, but that's what your tutorial will look like. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know, and hopefully this will make your job a whole lot easier.